Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 146 of Prog Review. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about this. That was uh, the Jazz Age by the Brian Ferry Orchestra. Um, yeah, there's no tangible product to be shown as I purchased this from eMusic, a very reputable online uh, download establishment as I have a membership with them and um, yeah this is an odd one this is a bit of a bit of a curate's egg if, if ever there was a definition of such a thing uh, you'd look it up and there'd be a picture of this album um, you, you, you know the Brian Ferry don't you? You, you you know Brian Ferry you know the crooner uh, the Roxy music um, who doesn't know Brian Ferry well anyway I don't know what happened. I don't know if someone slipped something into his cocoa or whether, you know, too much absinthe had, has, has got to him over the years, but he's um, done a jazz album. Yeah, yeah no, no, not like jazz album, but a jazz album as if it was recorded in the 1920s. <laughs> the 1920s. I mean, not that it sounds like it was recorded now, but it sounds like it was recorded in the 1920s. It's a peculiar, peculiar beast. Um, there's 13 tracks on it, and it spans 11 albums of his career. There's some, some Roxy on there. There's some of his solo material. And what he's done is he's kind of rewritten it for like a traditional traditional jazz band, uh, the kind that maybe Louis Armstrong may have played with back in the day you know in the early days of jazz uh, and um and uh, yeah and there's another thing brian ferry no vocals he doesn't sing a bleeding word not a single utterance comes from those wonderful pipes and there's no, no it's a completely instrumental album um of tunes Done in the 1920s jazz style. Am I, am I selling this to you? Are, are you immediately running online to buy a copy? Um, <laughs> it's not all bad. It's the most curious thing I've heard in a long time. It really is strange because I'm conflicted. You know, I'm conflicted. It's not that it doesn't work. It, it does work. If you turn your brain off, and you imagine that this was, um, I don't know, a record that had fallen through a time warp, and Brian Ferry had you know, copied the songs as you know into, uh, you know, Roxy Music songs. You know, it works. He's kind of retrofitted them though, and it's um, I don't know if it's a work of genius or a work of of supreme musical folly. I'm, the 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 jury's out. I mean, on one hand. Would the fans want to listen to this? Because they want to listen to Roxy Music and Brian Ferry. They want to hear him do what he does. And would fans of 1920s traditional jazz want to listen to this? Mm, I don't know. They might want to listen to the music of that era rather than this, like, um, copy. I don't know if it's a copy. Facsimile of, of music done in that style. Would, you know. So you've got these two incongruous listeners you know is there a, some sort of venn diagram where they meet you know i i don't know who, who's it for is it for brian ferry did he like i said did he just wake up and think hey that'll be a hoot let's um let's painstakingly recreate the 1920s on album and bamboozle my entire audience now i mean the songs are interesting i mean do the strand works love is the drug the melody's buried in there but it is in there they slow it down and turn it into something else uh some of the other songs you know i think that they, they don't work um don't stop the dance avalon slave to love the only face i thought reason or rhyme and this island earth those ones mainly because they're they're off of his, you know. They're they're either the Roxy I don't like, or they're off of his solo albums. But the ones that work have got a very discernible melody, and a, you know have a 
the more rocky numbers in the Roxy catalog and the Ferry catalog tend to transfer over because the melody's there and you can kind of lash onto it and it's not buried in the in the arrangement so you know it kind of half works for me in that respect i mean again if it had been all the hits done in this style it would have tickled my bone again who's he made this for not for me um so yeah you got it's a very strange record but again i i Found found myself turning my brain off and not thinking about Roxy music and just listening to the, ch- the tunes of it, and it is um, very very odd because <laughs> you think I know this. This is from somewhere. This is from somewhere else, <laughs> and you forget that it is um, a copy. But yeah, um, yeah, check it out. So I mean, I'm conflicted. There's a part of me that thinks. This is a monumental waste of time because it's purely a, you know an artistic folly that only a very few people are going to get. And um, you know, there's another part of me that thinks this is an absolute marvel of using the recording studio because what he's done in terms of production is very authentic. And you know, again, all I needed if I could get this on vinyl, you know, uh, on an old seventy-eight. Then you know, play through an old gramophone, mono gramophone. I think that would be the most authentic way of listening to this. But um, so yeah, I mean, the actual production of it, I find absolutely fascinating. Somebody who records, I find the way that they've you know transported the music back in time amazing. I think that's really clever. But then there's another part of me that goes, why, why, why? You know. As they say in Spinal Tap, there's a fine line between clever and stupid, and I think we're we're teetering on the edge here. We're kind of walking the tightrope, walking the tightrope. So when it comes to uh, giving this a rating, uh, I don't know what to do. I'm divided between one out of five for it being just a complete load of, you know, because it's it's just a folly. It's just a joke. It's like Steve Ackett re-recording Genesis. It's just, you know, it's a, you know, one out of five. And there's another part of me that thinks five out of five, purely because of the way they've re- recreated the, the atmosphere of the 1920s. I mean, it really is, to me, it sounds authentic and my experience of that kind of music. Um, but it's a strange one. So shall I just go straight down the middle? Shall I just, shall I just like, chop it in the middle? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go sh- straight down the middle. I'm going to give this two and a half jazz hands. Okay. I know it doesn't quite fit. Out of five, that's two and a half jazz hands out of five. And yeah, I mean, I would recommend you check it out. You know, give it a listen. I mean, you know, because it is the it's going to be the the strangest thing you've ever heard, especially if you are familiar with the Roxy music back catalogue you're gonna go wow how did you get to this point but then i suppose bands have done orchestral versions and classical versions and whatnot in the past i don't know i don't know anything anymore anyway my name's been darren lock i've been babbling on about brian ferry orchestra or brian ferry and his orchestra or is it brian ferry and his jazz orchestra i don't know brian ferry orchestra yeah we'll go with that the brian ferry orchestra album the Jazz Age. And I love the sleeve. I think the sleeve design is very good. Taken uh, from uh, Paul Collins' posters you know, from the, the from the that that era. You know, he did a lot of design. He's dead now. So I guess they can just rip off his work. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's it. Remember, because YouTube's all, all redesigned, you may want to um, you know, follow me on on Twitters and the Facebooks and the Google Pluses. We don't really talk about the Google Pluses. You might want to do that just to keep in touch with what videos I'm doing. I'm putting out lots of different stuff at the moment purely because, um, well, uh, because I want to. And um, so, you know, we're doing all different things. See, see, you know, throw it at the wall, see what sticks. So, yeah, I recommend you, you do the old um, uh, social media. You know, thumbs up, thumbs down, da-da-da-da. And um, thank you for being a a very patient and appreciative audience. And we'll do this all again on the next one. Only one more thing to say. And that's uh, Progon.
what Prog's got to do with it, but you know. Turn out. 